Good evening and welcome once again to another edition of One Man Show. I'm your Z-Man, Z Zoltai. You know, everyday life has a tendency to wear everybody down. We all need a place to go and unwind, rest and relax and recharge our batteries. For me, it's the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and that's where I'm going to take you tonight here on One Man Show. This bridge here, the Station Road Bridge, over 120 years old. Just beyond that, the curved structure is the concrete bridge of Route 82, which travels between Strongsville, Brecksville, and Broadview Heights, and the southern half of Cuyahoga County. Uh, they have a, a program that is bike and ride, where you can ride your bicycle on the Ohio and Erie Canal towpath part of the way, and then put your bike on the train for the rest of the journey. That's going to be really cool. So we'll talk to some folks with that. We'll also discuss the Junior Ranger program, and there's even a new strategy to reactivate a lot of the farms here in the Cuyahoga Cuyahoga Valley National Park to grow food once again for retail and consumer use, just like they did 75 and 100 years ago. Along the, the trail, our cameraman and myself uh, will be biking portions of the Ohio and Erie Canal towpath, where we'll stop and take a look at a lot of the foliage, the trees, and even talk to a lot of the folks that call the, the valley their home, a lot of residents and people that are regulars that travel along the towpath. Sit back and enjoy. One Man Show from the Cuyahoga Valley National Park starts right now. That's one way to get on, huh? Here we see some better shots of the Station Road Bridge, the oldest remaining metal truss uh, bridge in the Cuyahoga National Valley. It was built in 1881 and served travelers for almost 100 years. And uh, the interesting thing about the Station Road Bridge that uh, in 1992, this rare bridge was disassembled and transported to a company uh, in Elmira, New York to be rebuilt piece by piece, rivet by rivet all of the steel refinished and refurbished. Then the bridge was trucked back here and uh, it ties in uh, several trails, all-purpose trails in the Cleveland Metro Parks. Uh, it ties them into the um, Ohio and Erie Canal towpath in the Cuyahoga Valley National Recreation Area. So the Station Road Bridge, truly a beautiful piece of architecture that remains for all of us to enjoy to this day. Right now we've switched our shot to the helmet cam that I have strapped next to my head on the bicycle helmet. Once again, you can see the girth of the tree in comparison to, well, use my head and my body. This tree's probably about as wide as uh, almost a Volkswagen. I would say just in girth across, this tree is uh, almost five feet, and it towers almost uh, 80 feet into the air. It's just a beautiful example of some of the older trees that are along the Ohio and Erie towpath that you have to stop and take a look at just if just for maybe a minute or two during your bike ride. Now more of our trail adventure here on One Man Show. Big catfish, yeah. Now you can see the canal off to our right. 
many parts of the trail like this have the Cuyahoga River just eight and ten feet away from the edge of the trail. Whoa! Got to watch those horse chips sometimes where the horses decide to ride the same trail as the bicyclers. I always like seeing the dams that pop up occasionally along the river. As did that group of sightseers who stopped with their bicycles here to take a look at the dam. I'm going to pass on your left. Thanks. Wow. Oh, jeez. Oh, whoa. Well, I always like to stop here at uh, the old lock known as Lock 35, also a.k.a. Whiskey Lock. Why they called it Whiskey Lock in 1923 and got that nickname, I really don't know. But it's a great place to sit and stretch my legs, and I even bring a lunch. Don and I are going to really eat this trip, though, because uh, I think we're going to eat later on in the show uh, as we interview some of our guests down in the peninsula area. But you can see Lock 35 uh, is filled up with grass. No water in it anymore, but you can just picture how the water would rise and the canal boat would go up. They'd open the gate out on the other end. The water would drop out and the boat would sail right back out. But it's very important uh, that uh, you do take some provisions. If you're going to have a bike ride of any length of a couple miles or more, I bought this little jobby here that I... I strap on named after a, an animal in the desert, <laughs> aptly so, that allows you to carry a couple of quarts, and it's always mm. <laughs> mm, good to take on some water, which we're going to do just for a few minutes. And then Don and I will be right back on the trail to explore a lot of great things. Uh, we have an interview, too, right around the corner. We have to ride a mile or two to get to our next checkpoint to meet our guest, courtesy of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. So let me get this stuff back on. Ah, nothing like the wind whistling by your ears. All along the towpath we have mile markers that tell riders and hikers and walkers, joggers, whereabouts they are on the towpath. There's a good shot of Red Lock located at Highland Road. Well, we're at the halfway point of our journey, and uh, I've decided to stop at the Lock 32 Museum and Store. How many of you remember on the television series MASH when Radar was always talking about that infamous grape knee-high? Well, this is their last one here at the Lock 32 Museum and Store, and you know what? I don't have the heart to drink it, so I won't. But for the show, I figured I'd quench my thirst with a peach knee-high. When was the last time you saw one of those? Oh, yeah, baby. Peach knee-high at the Lock 32 Museum and Store. Oh, boy, that sure whets the whistle of your Z-Man here. You're watching One Man Show. There's plenty more of the Ohio and Erie Canal towpath coming up on our show, plus a whole lot more with interviews. No turtles yet. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, 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 hold on, folks. But there he is. Nice big turtle. This guy's about 10 inches around. You could see 100 turtles in a day on the towpath. This boy's got himself a nice warm chunk of sunny dead tree. I see you. Yes, I do. You're on one-man show, Mr. Tortoise. Listen to those tires. Ah, oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Open trail ahead. We'll make good time to our next stop.
Well, earlier in the show, I made a bicycle pit stop over at the Boston General Store. That's where I grabbed my mallow cup and my knee high. But as I was riding down the towpath, I thought it would be neat to bring all of you inside the Boston Store and Museum. And, and look who's here now. Travis White, a park ranger here in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Travis, thank you for being our guest tonight and mm -hmm. on One Man Show. Um, what exactly are your duties as park ranger here uh, at the Cuyahoga Valley National Park? I'm one of the interpretive rangers, and that means I help run the visitor centers. I uh, give programs, lead walks. Uh, do special programming, write brochures, things like that. Wonderful. Hey, we'll get you over on into the frame here a little bit more so the folks at home can see you. Uh, how would I or anybody back watching tonight get to become a park ranger here in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park? Well, it's very interesting. I've been a ranger for 27 years, wow. but I started, and this, this is one of the best ways I recommend, by being a volunteer. I started as a volunteer right, uh, I was still in college at the time, and here oh. at Cuyahoga Valley we have people volunteering all the time. We have 1,300 volunteers, we still need more, and it's a great way to get your foot in the door and find out if you like this kind of work. Hey, after uh, I wrap things up with you here, um, can you hook me up with an application? Because I'd like to be a volunteer. Absolutely, I sure can. Got them with me. Hey, uh, the towpath, which our viewers have been watching me kind of truck around on my bicycle all night mm -hmm. long on. Um, is made out of a gravel base that's really packed. What type of gravel is the towpath made out of here in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park? Right, it's made out of crushed limestone and they picked that because uh, it's fairly inexpensive. It uh, gives a little bit of cushion for joggers. It's also compacts pretty nice so that bicycles can ride on it just fine. As far as the number of miles, my legs are tired, yep. and I think I've shared with my listeners a couple of the mile posts here this evening, but uh, how many total miles are there of towpath here in the valley? Well, within our boundaries, within the park itself, it's 20 and one-half miles, Ooh. but you can go north and south and go beyond that quite a few miles because it's part of the Heritage Corridor. And the neat thing is this year, and I think we've touched on it a couple of times throughout the show too, uh, there's now the program where you can ride your bike and ride the train. Absolutely. The train will uh, either let you throw the bike on and take you for uh, a one-way trip and then drop you and your bike off, or you can get go on your ride and when you're tired, put it on the train and ride back. Now this question you should know the answer of, so I'm, I'm not really trying to trip him up, but when was the canal originally dug here in Ohio? Okay, it was started in 1825. They opened the first section between Akron and Cleveland in 1827, mm. finished the whole thing in 1832. And when did things begin to wrap up? Probably with the advent of uh, well, the locomotives and yeah, the trains? in 1880, you could hear a steam whistle right in this valley, and uh, I'm sure the canal boat captains got worried when they heard that. But it lasted a few more years. Uh, the last time a boat ran here was in 1913, and right that year we had a bad flood that did so much damage, the state of Ohio said we're not going to repair it, and that was the end of it. So the state funds actually were involved with the canal in those days? Oh yes, the state built it. Uh, they did try to let a private company run it for a few years, but that was not very good and fell into disrepair, and that was in the early 1900s. They took it back, tried to make a go of it, but it never did come back really. We're speaking with Travis White right now, a National Park Ranger here in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. I'm Z Zoltai, and you're watching One Man Show as my special uh, look tonight is on the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, the towpath, the train, and all the neat things there are to, to see and do. And before I get back onto the bicycle towpath, Travis, I want you to take our viewers and myself through the store here a little bit. Sure, I'd be glad to do it. Well, thanks a lot, Z. Uh, what I'd like to do now is show the folks uh, one of my favorite things here. It's our diorama here at the Boston Store Museum. And what this is depicting is a boat building yard back in the early 1800s. There actually was one here in the town of Boston. And this would show you what it would have been like back in those days. Of course, everything done by hand. What we have here is, first of all, a sawmill where they would have brought in logs and cut them up. Then they start working on the canal boats. And unlike today where we have assembly lines, wherever they started to build the boat is where they would finish the boat. But they actually would start more than one. So here you can see we have three started at one time, but at different periods. So they're in different states of being made. This one, as you can see, has got the ribs on it here. They're starting to put uh, the, the rib, the keel, and things like that. You move down here and you'll see that they're starting to put the outside planks on this one uh, and something to do that since they had curves they had to worry about they have a, had a steam box and you can see right here that would have been going 24 hours a day the water boiled right here somebody always tending the fire they put the planks in there and get them uh, wet and they would steam then they had only a few minutes to nail them onto the curved section of the canal boats 
From there, they would continue to work. Uh, and again, the final product down here, these, they're finishing it up. They're painting this one. It's almost ready to be launched. Wherever it was started is where it would have been launched from. Again, they never moved them. They were about 80 tons, so much too heavy to move. What they would do to launch it is grease these boards right here. And then they would, a whole bunch of men on the other side with boards would pry it until it slid down right into the canal right here. Also, a lot of the boats would get uh, old. They would need to be repaired. And over here we have what's called a dry dock. And they would actually put the boat inside there and then drain the water out of the lock. And they could then climb underneath and patch it, recock it and things like that. And then they would fill it back up with water and float the boat back into the canal. So that's some of the uh, interesting things we have here. But I want to take you now over and show you some of the tools that they used. Well, as I was saying, uh, the canal and the boats here were all built by hand, and that's something a lot of us don't even think about these days, but all of the canal was built with shovels, picks, wheelbarrows, uh, plows, and that kind of thing. And it's hard to believe that they didn't have any backhoes or anything to do the work, but they did it all by hand. The boats themselves had to be built with all these tools here. You see they had the old saws of all different kinds. They had hand augers, mallets. Uh, this is a broad axe up here. All of this was used to shape the wood used to create the canal boats. Over here you can see they also had to have wrought iron nails. These are handmade nails. Uh, they used oakum over here to actually caulk the canal boats. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is some of the pitch that they would have used that they would have melted and actually sealed it up with too. But this gives you an idea how much work it was to build some of these canal boats. But of course they didn't know anything different. That's how it was done. And they got used to it and built quite a few boats. I'll take you over now and show you a little bit more about how they actually sealed a canal boat. What we have right over here is actually a, a portion of a canal boat. This is, uh, of course, a reconstruction of what we built and put in here. But it gives you an idea of what the outside of a boat would have looked like. And as you can see, there are pretty good sized gaps between the boards, uh, the planks that were used on the canal boats. And those were on purpose. They didn't want them touching each other because it would be very hard to caulk or seal the boat. By leaving them open, they could then jam in there the oakum, which is a fibrous hemp material. They could jam it in here, and they use what were called caulking irons. We would think of them Well, that just about ones. does it, Travis, for our time, at least for me, here uh, this evening in the uh, Boston Museum, the Boston Store Museum, that is. I appreciate you being our guest and taking a couple of minutes to explain to me, as well as all of you out there watching tonight, a little bit about the museum and the store here in Boston. And... Um, at the end of the show, we'll be able to get some information for the viewers as far as websites and information on how to be a, a volunteer here in the National Park as well, correct? Absolutely. We've got all that information on the web. Excellent. Thank you, my man. Travis White, everybody. Always a lot of fun to talk to, especially when you come here into the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. This is Bill Mamma speaking from the Cahaga Valley Scenic Railroad running through the Cahaga Valley National Park. This railroad is a nonprofit railroad, nonprofit organization, and it runs through the Cahaga Valley National Park, starts at Rockside Station in Independence, Ohio, and goes down today to into Peninsula, Ohio. The Hog Valley Scenic Railroad operates 11 months out of the year and we carry 100,000 passengers a year during that time. Uh, one of the most, uh, we do a number of different activities. We have wine tasting trains, we do Thomas the Tank Engine special event. Uh, one of our most popular activities is the Polar Express during the Christmas holidays. Uh, we also have uh, the Santa Claus Adventure, the Christmas Tree Express, uh, a number of different activities year-round, uh, special events, uh, Easter Bunny Express. Every a special event, every season, we have something special uh, to offer to our passengers. 
And uh, we also take passengers, for instance, down to Akron from Rockside where they can get off the train and visit, uh, spend an afternoon in the area visiting Stan Hewitt Hall, uh, the Inventors Hall of Fame. Uh, we take train, uh, they can go down to Hartville and experience the uh, flea market and the Hartville kitchen. Uh, we also take trains down to Canton where passengers can spend an afternoon in Canton, go to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. They can visit the McKinley uh, Monument, the First Lady's National Historic Site, the Canton Classic Car Museum. Hey, here comes that waterfall, Bill. Our final destination today is the village of Peninsula. This village is very historical. It was uh, originally founded to support the canal. It was a small community that uh, where many of the canal uh, staff lived. And uh, today it is known for its quaint shops, restaurants, and it's just a fun place to visit. The train uh, stops here and people can get off for spend about three hours uh, visiting the shops and the restaurants and the museums and such in the area and uh, then they can get back on the train in the afternoon and return to Rockside Station in Independence. Well, I can feel the train slowing down, so folks, I think we've made it to our destination, which again is where, Bill? The village of Peninsula, Ohio. And this is going to be where I'm getting off to cut my Christmas tree, isn't it? Yes, you're going to get a beautiful tree for your house today. <laughs> nice. And I even brought a portable saw, just in case they didn't have one, because Lord knows, you wouldn't want your Z-Man out there wiggling that tree, trying to snap it off at ground level. I don't think the Rangers, as well as the people at Heritage Farm, would like that too much. Thank you again. Bill, it's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for riding the train with us today. You're watching One Man Show. Next, I'm going to step off this great big behemoth and go over to the tree farm, and you're going to watch me saw down my Christmas tree. Yeah, I think we're going to cut. Okay, go around the back corner of the barn. We have saw. You're not just on any TV show, you're on one man show. Awesome. And I'm going to go cut a tree today. All right. And I need a sled, and I know to stay away from the red tag trees, right? Nope, oh. those are the only ones you're allowed to cut. Oh, and the price and the height are on it. So if I cut a tree without a red tag, it's $150. I'm doomed. That's right, the young lady on the trolley said that. What happens? Do you send the Christmas tree police after me then? Nope. We charge you right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the credit card police, that's who comes after me. <laughs> well, I made it here A-OK -okay on the uh, rail system here in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Uh, I survived the trolley ride, and as uh, Kathy was telling us on the trolley, I'm going to have to be extremely careful not to cut down one of these trees that does not have a red tag. If I get one of these trees without a red tag, as you heard the folks a second ago, the Christmas tree police are going to come after me and have to pay 150 bucks. So, I'm going to have to go out here in the hinterlands, pan off over there and get a shot of the trees there, if you would. I'm going to have to head off into the hinterlands and find me a six-foot pine tree that I can cut that has a red tag, load onto this sled here you saw a minute ago in my hand, and bring it home to the studios of One Man Show in time for Christmas time. You're watching a, watching rather a special edition of One Man Show. It's kind of my three-month... Uh, photo album, the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. So why don't everybody come along with me? I'm going to drag this sled over the hillsides and go cut me a Christmas tree. Got a tag. Red tag, like the girl said, so that's okay. Let's see if this is in your Z-Man's budget here. Let's see. Well, that's not too bad. This is the tree that I'm going to cut down here today. So I'm going to set down the microphone and take the Z-Man saw and get myself a Christmas tree this year. Cut this bad boy at a 45 degree angle. Reach up inside here. And, oh, I gotta get the weeds out of the way there. And here we go. All right. Appreciate you tuning in this evening. It's always nice when you can appreciate the viewers liking a different subject matter. Ah, there ah. we have it. <clears throat> Complete with snow. Now we're going to load this bad boy onto the sled and then get into the baggage car on the train where we'll have a couple more interviews on tonight's show. And uh, I'll even let you see a picture of it in the house all finished off with the one-man show ornaments. So 
so that's how you guys do that, huh? Yeah. Oh, first they're going to shake the snow off of it. Ah. How many you looking at? Look at that. Wow, that was pretty darn quick. I've stopped here at Fisher's where I like to go all the time after my bike rides on the towpath and got myself a hot cup of coffee. Mm. And in addition to the fine cup of coffee here at Fisher's down in the valley at Peninsula, some of the tomato and bacon soup. Mm -mm. I tell you, that warms up your Z-Man after being out in the cold air cutting those Christmas trees in the snow. Well, I'm going to finish my lunch here, and then in a second, we'll be off to the train station to catch the uh, rail back to the, the uh, trailhead at Rockside, and uh, that'll culminate our show this evening here. down there. Well, there we are. We're in Brecksville now. Just a matter of time till we're back at Rockside. the old flat iron bridge we started tonight's show with. Except that was when it was a lot warmer outside. And there's the Route 82 Royalton Road Bridge. Christmas tree obtained on the Christmas tree run here on the rail system in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. 